Hi, welcome to your weekly marketing coffee break. I know a lot of you are using Facebook for your business. And so over the next few episodes, we're going to be talking specifically about some best practices you can use to really make your efforts that you're putting into the platform worthwhile and pay off. 68% of Americans use Facebook, and that is second only to YouTube among all of the social media platforms. This is Vicki Wu, and as always, we're talking about the best tips for marketing your small business. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to be notified of the latest updates. I know that you've heard YouTube or Facebook use is decreasing among younger generations, but the statistics don't always bear that out. Yes, there are other platforms that they're using, but for the most part, Facebook is still number one. And the best thing you can do on Facebook and any social platform is be consistent. That can sound overwhelming when you're thinking that you need to be putting a lot of work into it every day or multiple times a day. And that's not always the case. The one thing you do need to be doing on a regular daily basis is engaging with people who are commenting, liking, joining your page. That engagement is important and that can be done in as little as 10 or 15 minutes a day for the most part. So you can just schedule a short appointment with yourself to take that time and manually engage with people on your page. There's a couple of other tricks that we use to boost that consistency. One of the things I want to tell you about really quickly, though, is we recommend using the 80-20 rule whenever you're posting on Facebook or really any social media platform. And that says that you want at least 80% of your content to be something of value to the people on your page. And no more than 20% should be sales. Those sales ones do need to always include a direct call to action. And one of the pieces that I see some businesses that are getting the 80% of providing valuable content, they're getting great at that. And one of the pieces that they miss is actually asking people to engage, providing a call to action. Please visit my website or, you know, download this ebook or whatever it may be. So you also don't want to go too much the other way because you do need to be trying to wrap your arms around those people and bring them further into your business. And the best way to do that is a combination of engaging in a natural social way and actually asking them to join you. A really quick way you can check your content is if you go to your Facebook page insights and go down to the posts or just go to your page and scroll down through the posts and just make a little note on a notepad number one through 10 and for every post see if it is something of value or if it is a sales call to action. The items of value can also have a call to action so don't get that confusing but if it's a post that is only meant to you know, drive a sale or drive someone to your website without providing much other intrinsic value, you're going to mark that one as sales. All the other ones mark as, you know, content or value. And just make that quick list, value, 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 sales, value. And then go back out of your 10 posts, and if at least eight of them are items of value, informational, newsworthy, interesting, and no more than two of them are a direct sales message, you're doing pretty good on the 80-20 rule. Another way you can use consistency without you having to manually write a post a day or multiple posts a day, which can get overwhelming and take a lot of time, you can curate good content from around the web. Even sometimes if it's a competitor, maybe not your direct competitor, you know, the person down the street that's selling the same coffee you are, but the coffee suppliers, perhaps in that case. Go around the web, find content about your industry that interests you and share that on your page. 
I noticed a couple things with this. First, like I said, it's a great way to have consistency without you having to write something. And in your 15 minutes you're doing a day that I recommend that you're doing engagement, you're probably also consuming news and you can quickly grab the link and share it to your page and bam, you're done. You've shared a post. It's an item of value to your audience because if you're interested in it about your industry, they likely are as well. And another big thing I notice is that we all know engagement, not even engagement levels, but um, having your post seen on your Facebook page is dropping because of algorithms on Facebook. Obviously, they want you to pay to play. They want you to advertise. Engagement rates are going down. Sharing those types of curated content, especially if it's from a very well-known source, such as a mainstream news source or something like that, those posts automatically always generate a lot more audience. A lot more people are seeing it. What that's doing is getting your page in front of them in their news feed so that you have a better chance of staying top of mind. So try it with a couple. If you haven't use this strategy, go into your Facebook and find a couple of really great stories. Don't share them all at once. Share one today, share one tomorrow. If you need to pre-schedule it, do that. Do two or three of those, and after a day that they've been posted, scroll back through, and you'll likely see that those posts are reaching more of the people on your page. Average reach um, across all industries, your number of page likes, your average organic reach is going to be 6% if you're lucky. And that type of created content can easily boost that number. And again, it's all about keeping your name top of mind. And the only way you can do that on Facebook is if your fans of your page see your name scroll across their newsfeed. Another thing you can do is do some pre-planning. I usually try to plan when I do my annual planning for my business, which I hope you're all doing, I sit down and try to plan out at least some general topics or themes that I want to touch upon over the next year in my marketing, my social media marketing specifically. And I'll break those down. And so I do that overall planning at the end of the year for the next year. Then once a month, I try to sit down and actually plan what my posts or podcasts or, you know, shares on my social media are going to be for that month. And I try to, I try to get them all done at that point. Doesn't always happen, but at least I make a good dent in it. And then on a weekly basis, I'll go in and make sure that those are posted or scheduled. It really helps break it down. I don't always have to think about you know, oh my gosh, I'm sitting here and I know I need to post today and what am I going to talk about? Because I already have kind of a, at least a general overall plan and all I have to do is go into that plan and pick my topic and I already know what I'm going to talk about. I don't have to think about it. I love saving brain power. I have a marketing calendar template on my website that you can actually download for free. I actually have a video also that walks you through exactly how I use this how I use it for myself, how I use it for my clients. Just go to my website. You can search the word uh, marketing calendar or actually just calendar probably and find that template and you can use it for your own purposes and you know customize it to your needs. But it's a really great planning tool and it leaves you never wondering what am I gonna you know, post on my social media today. That also helps you with the consistency. And while you're being consistent, let's talk a little bit about the best times to post. And while you're on my website grabbing that calendar template, you can go to the free resources tab and I have a whole ebook on the best times to post on many of the different social media platforms, including your blog and your email. Facebook itself, um, recommended frequency, one post per day. And again, that can seem overwhelming unless you implement some of these other strategies that help make it really easy. You can do more than one a day. But again, stay in that 80-20 rule to keep 20% or less of your posts being sales posts. And overall, industries across the board, it can be a little varied based upon your unique industry, but for the most part, between 1 to 4 p.m., 
late in the week and weekends is the best time. That content gets more engagement and engagement is one of the driving factors of Facebook's algorithm to get your posts seen by more people, which means your page is seen be, being seen by more people and your business name is getting in front of those people. Even if they're just scrolling past it, it's, you know, it's popping into their sub subconscious at least, keeping top of mind. Saturday and Sunday at noon, noon to 1 p.m. are also great. If you think about it, people are, they've been up a little bit and that's about the time that they're going in and checking their social media. Thursday and Friday, 1 to 4 p.m. Later in the week, it's the afternoon, people come back from lunch and that's a time that they're sitting down and checking their social media. And then Wednesday's at 3 p.m. randomly. So if you only have one post a week or one post a day, you wanna tune in on those times. If you want the most engagement, Thursday and Friday, end of the week, happy and funny content works best on Friday. And Facebook use actually spikes by 10% on Friday. Keep in mind, that means you're also gonna have probably a lot more competition from other pages that are posting also because they know there's more users. So it can be good and bad. You have the prospect of being in front of more users, but you're also competing against other, other content. If um, shares is what you want, 1 p.m. Again, people getting back from lunch for the most part and they're scrolling through Facebook and they're sharing. If you need clicks, like a click on a link, 3 p.m. is the best time for clicks. The worst times to post, and this is probably even more important than knowing the best times. On the weekends before 8 a.m., because no one's gonna be up, and after 8 p.m., because they have other things to do on the weekend. And any day, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., that overnight traffic won't get you very great results. Again, that ebook is available on my website, vickywoo.us, on the free resources tab, so you can go grab that and download it. Next week, we're gonna be talking about a few more tips about the different types of content, um, text post, image post, link post, video post, those different types of content, and which ones work best, and which ones, um, how you can implement those in your strategy. Until then, I'll see you next week.